Good evening and thanks for joining us everyone. Well, as we saw in the headlines there, looks like Winnipeg's getting an NHL team there. And yep. Carly, I was there when the Jets had to leave and it was one of the saddest days of my life. And Pretty happy that they're coming back. They're coming right? Back. Well, you can imagine the party scene in Winnipeg. This has been a story in the making, and it's fitting that now we finally have a, a resolution ahead of the start of the Stanley Cup final. And Gerard, we're getting treated to a lot of nice weather lately. Is this like something that's going to continue, or are we bound for a little bit of bad weather? Well, bad is always relative. I mean, we've been through winter, so <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're dealing with right about now. 20 is what we've climbed to. That happened in the last 40 minutes thereabout. The humidity has moved to 25%. We'll be watching that during the course of the evening. There is some precipitation in the mix. The winds out of the north northwest at 18 and the UV index we're looking at is a four. What we're dealing with as we compare across the region, some cloud cover that has sat with the Lakeland region for the better part of the day, but it has enabled them to climb to 21. And in the Battlefords, a mix of sun and cloud after a very cloudy afternoon and a wonderful 20 degrees Celsius. One local boy's generosity is going to put a smile on the faces of children affected by the fire in Slave Lake. Instead of asking for presents for his birthday, this seven-year-old wanted to give his, friend, or give his friends money so he could donate it to the kids of Cold Lake. Or, sorry, Slave Lake. Kathy Lee finds out what else he gave away and why he wanted to help. Most seven-year-olds plan to keep all their birthday presents, but Ethan Beck just kept one. His new bike. Because the tires go backwards and frontwards, but I like it lots of times. Instead of getting more gifts, he decided to do something else to help those in need. For my birthday this year, I asked for money instead of presents because I'm donating money to Slave Lake because they, lo cause they lost lots of stuff. In the fire. Ten dollars from each friend was collected with a small portion towards his new bike. He ended up raising um, over the course of it, I think it was two hundred and fifty, two hundred and sixty dollars is what he ended up getting from everybody that had come in. I got it at one of my mom's connect girls. And two of his old wheelers were also given away. They fit him now, but they're they're almost a little too small for him and he wanted a new bike of his own, so we said, yeah, this is this will be the way to do it. The idea to give to Slave Lake came to Ethan after watching footage of the fire on TV. I explained to him, I said, we'll put it this way. I said, everything that you have, all your toys, all your clothes, your bed, your hockey trophies, your soccer trophies, stuff like that. I said, every bit of it's gone. I said, imagine that. I said, there's hundreds of kids up there that are like that now. And right away he said, well, that's where I want to donate my money to. While Ethan's generosity is admirable, his mom, Yvette Beck, says he's always been like this. He's a thoughtful little boy, and he's always put his heart out there for everyone. And we're very proud of him this year. Ethan may be short on toys this year, but he knows his help will go a long way. And I just feel like I can still do that, and I was really happy to do it. Kathy Lee, New Cap News. The Lloydminster Community Youth Center has provided vital services for kids in the border city for several years. Today they reflected on their past year and also plan for the future in their annual general meeting. Members of the Lloydminster Youth Community Center as well as people from other organizations were present for this year's AGM. Because we're a non-profit organization we share with the public uh, what's going on in the center and, and our financials and where we're sitting. Over the course of the year the organization felt an increase in demand for their services. Well, the past year at the youth center we've increased our attendance numbers which is great. We've started being open Fridays at four o'clock as opposed to seven so that's really nice the kids can come right after school. Youth center members also took the opportunity to thank companies that helped support them last year. I think a lot of times especially in the, the youth demographic that the Lower Dairy Drug Strategy targets as well as a community youth center kind of that forgotten group between the age of 12 and 18 primarily so you know anything that we can do to bring awareness to those kids is just a benefit to everyone in the end. Now the organization is looking forward to their next chapter. One of our biggest goals would be a new building um, and so over the next year I guess we're hoping to continue building community support and com continue building partnerships, awareness of the youth centre, um, continuing our partnership with the Lloydminster Area Drug Strategy and Hopefully, we'll be in a new building in the next couple of years. 
A Cold Lake student has reached the national stage thanks to his carpentry skills. Every year, students compete in the trades competition with the goal of making it to the national championship. As Clayton Brown explains, a Lakeland teen has done just that. Carl Pellerin is a grade 12 student from École Voyageur. He just finished competing in provincials for carpentry and now he gets to represent Alberta at the national championship later this week. I used to just, you know, do carpentry uh, around, ha around the house or come here at school to do a wood shop, but I never thought it'd get me like this far. And on my third year, 12th grade, I get the chance to go to nationals. I think it's amazing. The competitors will have 12 hours over two days to build a playhouse. With a tight deadline and on a bigger stage, Carl says the pressure will get intense, but he looks to draw on his experience from his three previous provincials. I know I'm going to be a little bit nervous because, you know, it's nationals, it's a one step higher, but at the same time, I got all the experience from the other competitions. I know how to read the plans because I've read so many of them. I think the biggest thing that Carl has learned over the provincials is time management and uh, trying to balance meticulous measurements with finishing the project on time. Carl's shop instructor won't take any credit for his success. He says it's the young man's willingness to learn and hard work that has allowed him to thrive. He has a pretty, a pretty heavy schedule as far as courses, but whenever he has a chance to build something, he just he's in here uh, either lunchtime or on weekends. I know he's done stuff. The carpenters will be judged on how safely they work, the saleability of the final product, and the proper use of the materials. First thing is to, to interpret the plan, and then they have uh, X amount of materials to work with and X amount of time and they're expected to, to come up with a, a product that is what, what the plans ask. The competition takes place in Quebec City beginning on Thursday. In Cold Lake, Clayton Brown, New Cap News. Coming up after the break, our Make Sense feature looks into the dangers of overspending on lavish items. Stay with us.